Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Rudy Nieto here. Uh, start you out with a quick quote that uh, should kind of rule the day. Service should be less about bending over backwards to please customers and more about preventing frustration and delay. This was a quote from a book that is near and dear to Daxco and Capacity from Matthew Dixon uh, called The Effortless Experience, Conquering the New Battleground for Customer Loyalty. So I'm here to introduce myself, Rudy Nieto. I am the Chief Relationship Officer from Daxco and uh, Michael Diak, uh, an account executive from Capacity, one of our featured partners. And what we're here to talk today about is um, community effort, you know, you know, the amount of co community effort scoring that we are bringing to bear with partners such as, uh, such as Capacity. And it all comes from uh, this book that uh, actually Daxco has embraced internally, uh, starting uh, coming out of COVID on how we could better delight our customers, which is you, and how uh, you can help your community uh, have a better uh, effortless experience there. Um, so going forward, a couple of statistics that I wanted to leave with you. And, and I'll start, let me, let me start with the end in mind. I think I, I probably promoted this discussion with a little bit of foretelling of hey, how can we do a better job predicting the future with MPS as opposed to finding out what already happened that I can't really do anything about with MPS? Um, what we hear from most wise is everybody's looking at MPS and they all wanna do better in MPS, but every time they try to do something about it, it's too late. And so we spent a lot of time as uh, internally uh, focusing on our MPS and how we could do a better job predicting where that MPS is gonna go because we want it to be best in class because that means we're providing great value to you. And so what we arrived at was um, a statistic called customer effort score. And essentially this book that we read called Effortless Experience was able to show us that while NPS is what we would call a lagging indicator of something that's probably already happened too late to a leading indicator of something that will tell us what is going to happen in the future. And so we arrived at customer effort score uh, after years of, of really uh, beating our heads against the ground during COVID, trying to figure out what the right way is. A um, couple of stats I'm going to hit you with. 96% of customers with a, quote, high effort service interaction become more disloyal compared to just 9% who have a low effort experience. And by the way, the company that published this book is called Gartner. They're one of the leading firms in, um, in B2B and B2C um, consumer and community behavior. So they've, they've got a lot of credibility in the market. Actually, their first book um, that I read when I was uh, starting in software was called The Challenger Sale, if any of y'all have heard of them. But what the statistics were showing us is that uh, by looking at the relative effort in a service interaction, you were able to accurately, more, uh, more, much more accurately predict loyalty and or disloyalty. And I think historically, I think when we think of Daxco, uh, I think everybody knows we have a lot of associates and we spend a lot of time and energy loving on our customer base. But at, at some point, customers started telling us, hey, I appreciate all these people you're throwing at my problem. But what I'd rather have happen is me be able to go get what I need to solve the problem without having to go talk to a bunch of folks and have a bunch of people thrown at the issue, different systems, different logins, et cetera. And so, you know, I know as an organization, that's something we've really wrapped our heads around. Hopefully some of you are seeing that in the market that we are doing a better job responding to the amount of effort that you have to go through in order to get the service interaction that you need. So uh, going forward, you know, I'll, I'll give you a couple of different examples um, in the future, but what we're trying to do in this meeting with capacity is let's pivot from customers, which is Daxco and you, to let's talk about you and your community. So just, you know, uh, fortunately the acronym is the same. It's still, um, you know, customer effort score, community effort score. How do we adapt this book um, in order to fit what you're trying to do with your mission and your vision in your community. And so uh, I'll give a quick example of just a personal example. I think everybody knows um, what was happening in uh, the nonprofit side in the education market. Um, you can move one forward, Sarah. Um, I, uh, I happened to go serve on a, a school board bond committee in Houston, and uh, I've experienced this firsthand. So a good example of this is 
in the in 2010 to 2019 leading up to COVID, there was a lot of um, initiatives around um, data management and cultural initiatives in our schools. And there's lots of reasons for that. And part of the reasons is it does help you um, sell a bond to taxpayers um, on all the things that they wanted to do that sounded like great ideas of ways that we would like to improve in our schools. And so we spent a lot of money, raised, you know, probably raised taxes, raised bonds to do a better job with data management, drive more cultural initiatives. The challenge was all of those things were good ideas, but they were creating higher effort experiences for the core customer um, in that aspect, which was me and my kids or you and your kids, uh, this, the parents and the students. And so while the intent was, hey, we think this is going to be a better thing for our community based off what we think, the community told us, well, actually, we're going backwards. And this is this is a bit of a personal opinion, but for anybody who had kids during COVID, I think we were really kind of uh, for all the effort that we expended doing all these things through 2009 to 2019. Uh, when we went through COVID and everybody had to go do school over Zoom, I think it was all for naught. And and really, we could have been thinking differently about what is the end customer community member need in order to have a low effort experience. Because at the end of the day, we wanted our kids to be safe and make good grades. And, you know, we just took our eye off the ball. So that's just a personal story for me that also was mentioned in the book that I would share. So let's talk about some high effort experiences that we are seeing um, in nonprofits today. And so my goal today with Capacity is share some areas where we can identify high effort areas. I'll just tell you what's going to happen at the end. We actually have a little quiz for you that you'll even be able to self-assess um, where you have some potential opportunities. So... There's four key high effort areas, right, that, I'll, that I'm going to talk about now. Today, specifically, we're going to focus more, more operationally and around communication um, and less on a few others. But it's operations, like how many computer systems do you have? How many logins do you need? Um, communication, how many channels do you have? How many times do you actually have to switch channels um, with an existing member as opposed to having more of a uni unified strategy? How are we soliciting feedback? How are we making e it easy to receive feedback? And then how are we activating upon feedback? And then digital, as everybody knows, I think everybody's got a website, but there's a differentiation between a website and a real digital front door, which means not just do you have a link that says .com at the end or .org at the end, but how actionable is that website? How effortless can that um, digital experience be for your members? Again, we're gonna focus today primarily on operations. So going forward, um, I'll give you a couple things on software. Bottom line, are you working for the software or is the software working for you? And it affects you directly if you're running your organization, but it really affects your people at the check-in desk um, and at the, you know, in the trenches, really um, fighting the fight to make sure your community is feeling engaged and feeling like they're having a great experience. So we look at a lot of different things and I have a couple of different questions to ask yourself and they'll show up in the quiz just as you give yourself the assessment. Um, the first one being, um, waiting for the slide to catch up here. Uh, the first one being, you know, how easily can your staff manage and understand the financial aspects of your organization? So can you, you know, can your, are your systems helping you budget and report and track expenses? Or what we see a lot of times is there is a, a, le a, a ledger somewhere that's just written down on somebody's desk or it's an Excel spreadsheet or it's in a Google Doc um, that doesn't necessarily always have visibility or get updated. And so you spend a lot of time toggling and validating different data sets. So how easy is that to happen? Again, are you working for the software? Is the software working for you? Uh, secondly, um, just you know, how easy is it for your community to give you donations, right? Or is it is it something that you know make is easy enough to where they just don't think about it, or is it something that's a bit of a chore for them to think about? Hey, I need to go write a check. Um, you know, it goes from really a great experience and really low effort to really high effort. How do we rank there? And then the third being, and I, and I think um, um, my friend Michael is going to speak to this. You know, are you offering self service support options for your community to get the help the need they need twenty four hours a day? And I think that's an area where, you know, we're constantly striving to do that for our customers. And, and I know for your members, they're asking for the same thing. So I think, Michael, you had a few things to, to, to add to that. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Rudy. Um, 
you know, we were really excited that we had the opportunity to work with uh, YMCA of Greater Dayton. And that's actually what's on the screen here on the right hand side is an example of uh, the web concierge or chatbot that, that uh, we have loaded onto their website. Um, so <clears throat> with our integration into Daxco, uh, we're able to do a lot of really cool things, providing both member and staff support that is truly 24-7, 365. So reducing friction at lots of different points, uh, allowing folks to ask questions in the middle of the night and get a response right away, uh, as well as enabling front desk staff and contact center staff to, to get answers to the questions that they have as well. Uh, and with the, our connection into Daxco, we can also do instant record updates uh, and do some AI powered program registrations as well. So Sarah, if you wanna kick to the next slide. Um, YMCA of Greater Dayton is a pretty large organization. Uh, so right now they're serving over 200,000 members, uh, 13 locations across the Dayton area. And right now in capacity, they are running about 6,000 inquiries each month. So that's individual folks coming to the chatbot, having a, a full conversation with the chatbot, whether they're asking about membership or asking for a program registration or those kind of other frequently asked questions. Uh, and right now we're deflecting about 90% of those questions as they come in, requiring no human intervention. Um, the bot is responding, providing the answer, and we're getting positive feedback from the users that they're getting the answer that they want. Uh, this has been a real game changer um, for the folks at YMCA of Greater Dayton. Uh, Sarah, next slide. Just to kind of zoom out a little bit on the functionality that we actually have built in with uh, Daxco and Capacity. Um, you can do the first one here. So first we've got member and staff support. So <clears throat> when YMCA of Greater Dayton came to us, one of the things that was a pain point absolutely was um, we've got multiple locations, we've got front desk staff at locations, and uh, we also have kind of a contact center of folks that are, that are centralized answering some questions. So how can we put all of that information into a central location um, that allows uh, our users and uh, our members to get that information quickly uh, in a centralized location? So that's really what we've done there. Um, we're also allowing instant record updates. So some of the simpler processes that used to involve a human being or a phone call or asking someone at the front desk, since we have direct connection into Daxco, we can actually facilitate those membership registrations, those program registrations directly through the chat bot. And that leads me to the next one is, is program registration. So that was something that um, for larger organizations that have lots of different programs, uh, putting that into the chatbot directly has really helped uh, with improving the experience for members. They can get to the program that they want to register for. They can get directly to that link, find the information they want, and then register for that program. Um, we're also centralizing knowledge for internal staff as well. So we talked about that a little bit earlier with uh, the front desk staff as well as the contact center staff. So uh, YMCA of Greater Dayton has done a really good job of building a knowledge base that is external public facing and then also internal as well. So there's a lot of documentation and information that lives in their knowledge base uh, that is not accessible to the public that helps them run their operations uh, and provide a, a better member experience. Of course, it all happens 24-7, 365 in the middle of the night on Christmas, on New Year's, uh, members can get answers to those questions. And most importantly, ultimately, what we're doing is providing deflection so that when a member does have a question um, about you know, membership or a program registration, that they're able to get that information very quickly without having to bother a staff member or if a staff member isn't available, um, really being able to get that information very quickly in an experience that is relatively frictionless. So Rudy, I'll give it back to you. Well, hey, well, uh, for starters, I need to go see if capacity works for uh, family reunions. I have something coming up with my in-laws soon. I might need to, uh, I might need to call you. Uh, just, at least nobody tell my bride I said that. But um, no, that's amazing. Uh, I'm a member of the Houston Y, and I, and I know that they are always striving to do these kinds of things. And, um, you know, I'm really hoping that they uh, are getting a chance to look at this presentation. Okay, so the second piece we talked about in reducing effort, right, and, and um, you know, improving your overall effort score is communication. 
up here is a what I would call a contact blueprint that uh, we got from uh, a YMCA, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and it, it lays out you know how they you know see that flow working, um, and how you take you know mission vi vision values and then you cascade that in a communication sequence and a communication pattern based off of you know which channels are best for which audiences, what actions needs to get taken, which assets are getting leveraged. The insight I would give you is that, you know, when you're scoring how well you connect to your community, a majority of us, it's human nature to think from the lens of how we think, as opposed to thinking about how they are going to receive the messaging, right? It's not about what we want to say. It's about, you know, how they need to receive it. And what we find in a lot of areas, and we found this uh, in our own company, is that we probably do a really good job identifying mission, vision, theory of change. And we probably pick a pick our first audience pretty well because that's most likely what we align with. But there are so many audiences in our community that we end up missing because we we spend all of our time on the audience that we most align with. And we we don't always get a chance to, um, you know, articulate the different audiences and the different actions and messages and calls to action that they need could be by by age, could be by uh, by gender, could be by different ethnic backgrounds economic areas, zip codes, et cetera. There's all different ways to have effective communication with your, with your community and everybody wants to be messaged a different way. So it's just a matter of having that additional nuance to where folks are able to interact with you in the way that they wanna interact with you, which is a much lower effort and a much higher community uh, effort score overall, which should be a good future predictor of NPS. So a couple of questions to ask yourself as you're going through that analysis, and a lot of this should be in the in the quiz later. Uh, one, just kind of a, a sniff test. How easy is it for you to promptly communicate last minute changes? So if you have a rapid fire, hey, snow day tomorrow uh, during the week, child care is open. If you're in the Northeast, that that does happen sometimes. Um, you know, or hey, the pool's closed, or you know, something big like that, right? Um, it, you know, most of those quick fire type communications are hard to do if you don't have the right communication blueprints set up because you spend all your time talking about what you have to go say and you run out of time to go say it. Uh, second being mobile app. And, and I think this bleeds over into digital, honestly. This is just kind of a, an extension of your digital front door. Um, how, how comprehensive is it to go do all the things? Is it a mobile app to say I've got a mobile app or is it a mobile app that's immersive that gives you all the features for your members and your staff to where they actually could be both on their mobile app at the same time interacting and doing the thing that they want to do with low effort, as opposed to, again, going to a separate system, separate login, separate spreadsheet, what have you. And unfortunately, we find a lot of those things just end up on pen and paper. Um, you know, I think intuitiveness is important. And then just doing, you know, what, what are they consuming the most? Where is a lot of the revenue coming from? Program re registration, membership joins, childcare. Um, and I'm sure, and I know there's a couple others in there. So, how comprehensive is that mobile app to do it? Unfortunately, I'm seeing several um, nonprofits that have to have multiple apps to go do that. And so that is a challenge. Uh, third, um, program attendance, health history and waivers. Way too much pen and paper. I would offer that that is probably as much on Daxco as we're leaders in the nonprofit software market. Um, and we should be, and we should be encouraging all the software providers to give you a much easier electronic way for parents and children and members to go manage their program attendance and uh, do the health history and waivers electronically with the community because that's what they're used to now. When you go to the doctor's office, um, you go to school, that's how it gets done. They're not used to having to go back to pen and paper. So going forward, a um, couple other things. Feedback we talked about. I'll give you some quick stats. I'll just tell you, feedback works taking action on feedback works even better. So we uh, we did a pretty much simple A-B test. Organizations that did implement efforts to collect feedback, more than half the time they found something that caused them to make a change in program offering. So pretty in fact, impactful that a majority of them are learning something 63% of the time that would cause them to make a change. Almost half of them actually made an operational change to be more respectful of those preferences that they collected in the feedback. And actually, 31% of those uh, started offering new services um, as a result. So, you know, taking in feedback works. You know, the, the challenge would be if it's hard for somebody to give you feedback, they're not likely to give you feedback. I think everybody knows that 
in, in, in the world of customer surveys, if you make it hard to do a survey and to do feedback, the only people that fill them out are the people that are mad, right? But if you make it easy and um, you know you make it more effortless, a lot of times they're more you're more likely to get the good stuff and the more productive comments. And so we would just highly encourage on feedback. So a couple of things to look at from a feedback perspective would be uh, number one. Um, oh, I apologize. Um, I, I missed the slide here. Sorry. This is the feedback loop that it should look like, and I think this will be included in some of the follow up materials. Um, you know, it's essentially, you know, have a good idea on how you're going to uh, do, you know, what feedback are you trying to get? How do you plan to collect it? Who's going to analyze it? Um, and then, you know, how do you get to that course correction? Most people stop at maybe one or two, and then we don't necessarily have the plan for the whole loop of how we actually take that feedback and activate it. Um, I would actually say if you're going to go ask for feedback without a plan to take action upon it, it's worse than if you just never asked for it in the first place. It's almost like you you ask to find out the problems, they tell you the problems, but then you had no plan to address the problems. So now the problems actually create more effort. So from a, uh, for some questions that you can ask yourself, um, you know, one, are you regularly sending and receiving and receiving responses? Um, and then how are you engaging through the different channels? I think we've talked about communication. So are you using multiple channels to track? And then um, how quickly are you communicating? You know, I think just from a feedback perspective, how, how quickly are we, how effectively are we communicating just general initiatives? Um, how are we doing as a financial organization? What are some successes we have in the market? I think sometimes we don't put ourselves out there well enough to uh, solicit, you know, the right kind of feedback. I know that that's a struggle for Daxco. Sometimes we get so in the clouds on what we want to go do. It's more, I think everybody needs to know how we're doing for you. Um, and I think it's the same for your members, letting them know how we're doing and then giving them the opportunity to say, hey, I see you say you're doing this well. I need to go let you know some things that you might not know about yourself. And then we can go get it in the feedback loop and take some activity upon it. Okay, and then uh, last but not least, we're rounding we're rounding third on this. Um, let's talk about digital presence. On the right uh, is a boys and girls club. Now, now, shameless plug. This is a boys and girls club that uh, Daxco does business with. But we took them from what I would call a check the box website on Drupal, uh, which is kind of an older um, content management technology, uh, and brought them to a fully immersive WordPress site. And the large difference was, again, it was like, oh, yeah, hey, I have a website. Go see me here to, hey, you can fully interact with us through our website in the same way that you do everything you would want to do in our uh, centers, in our in our community centers, in our pools, in our child care, outside of actually doing the doing the activity itself. So, again, waivers, check ins, registration, um, you know, account status, managing payments, all those things. Are they accessible, right? Are they interactive? And actually, the third thing we take we, we miss a lot of times is accurate. I think most of us forget that things change so often. Um, you'd be surprised how many. I think it's uh, error code 404 or 403, no response when somebody clicks on a link and it's dead or the the information's not accurate. So just being passionate about that and understanding that having a fully immersive website that is accessible, interactive, and accurate is a great predictive uh, factor in increasing your NPS and having a much higher community effort score. So a couple of things, I'll give you a couple of stats and then I'm gonna turn, turn, it over, turn it back over to Michael. Great stats. So it's not that we're not doing anything. Um, in the 2023 nonprofit Tech for Good report that uh, they did a study of a number of nonprofits, uh, they found out that 68% have done a redesign. So they did something with their website because they recognized it was important. I'm sure COVID drove a lot of that. Interestingly enough, though, think about effort. Of those 68%, so only a third uh, did uh, have uh, only, uh, excuse me, only a fifth have websites designed for those with visual and hearing disabilities, ADA compliance, correct? I think we've all heard of that. So again, close to 70% redid their website and had the opportunity to do something about this. And only a fifth actually still have websites that are ADA compliant. Another fifth only have websites available in, in, um, in more than one language. So again, we, we did do something. We put some effort in there, but 
unfortunately, we did leave a lot of high effort experiences still out there for people who don't have English as a native languages or have any kind of disability, you know, could be colorblind, could be here, you know, could be deaf. There, there's lots of different issues with that. Um, and then the other piece is that there's still a lot of older content management systems out there. Positive news is that the more WordPress we see, that usually means the more interactive those websites are going to be. So uh, interesting statistics there. And again, I think in the quiz, you'll see a few things. And then obviously we can get in the weeds if folks would like to have a discussion about their individual uh, web presence. So some quick questions to ask, and then I'm going to turn it over to Michael. Um, basics. Can your community join or register for programs online? Um, you know, obviously that got accelerated during COVID because that might have been the only way you could do it um, at some point. But, you know, how easy is that process? Is it something as easy as, you know, signing up for something on, you know, everybody knows Amazon, Apple, all those things. Um, secondarily, is it, um, is it up to date and accessible? Meaning, is it available in all the different browsers? Um, or is it only available in certain browsers? And then is there somebody constantly monitoring the content to make sure it's all accurate? Or do they go on the website and, you know, they see that, you know, they see, you know, happy St. Patrick's Day from last week, right? And, and just keeping that relevant. There's tools to do that. Um, there's also a lot of times having somebody on staff to do it. There's just a couple ways to solve for that. And then um, the third one, which I'm really interested to talk to Michael about is, does your website have an AI powered interactive chat to reduce vo call volume? By the way, I'm just gonna, um, I'm, I'm a dummy. So I always have to spell out my acronyms. AI stands for artificial intelligence. So in case anybody knows, also we'll tell you there, the old acronym that was real popular was API. That stands for application programming interface. So if you see any other acronyms, think about that, how you talk to your members, they probably don't know what those acronyms are either. So how do we reduce that effort and make it easier for them? So when we talk about AI powered interactive chat to reduce call volume, that's something I know Daxco is hyper-focused on now. Again, so you can easily self-service and, and, and if you are gonna need to get to the person to go help you resolve your issue, we try to help you triage enough to where you, you've, you've got a good line of sight on, on um, having your issue fixed ahead of time. So um, with that, I'll turn it back over to Michael. Awesome. Thanks, Rudy. Uh, I'm actually going to introduce uh, one of my favorite capacity colleagues. Uh, she is a senior customer success manager with us, Ms. Sammy McCann, uh, and she's actually going to join us and uh, take over uh, this next little section here. Well, thanks so much for that, that wonderful introduction, Michael. Um, so as Michael said, I am a senior customer success manager here at Capacity. Um, and I do a lot of the implement, implementation and training um, for customers like the Greater Dayton of White or the YMCA of Greater Dayton. Um, so, so with that, I've worked with them almost two years. Um, and then Sarah, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, I just kind of want to go over the problem and solution that the Dayton YMCA was facing. I know Michael went over it a little bit in the beginning, um, but going back to the issue that Rudy has even said for, for this whole presentation as well is information was spread everywhere. People were asking at the front desk, calling the front desk and the receptionist and a big item or a big issue for the Dayton team was that they would have to transfer calls to different branches in order to find the information that was needed. So that created a very high effort um, phone call, you know, you're being transferred and put on hold, you know, four or five times or something along those lines, when it could have been something a lot more streamlined if all of their information was housed in one place. Um, and then people wouldn't even have to pick up the phone if they didn't want to in the first place, or they could have a high value, high value quality conversation um, with the team instead of being transferred. So the solution that the Dayton Y team did one, I know they already had Daxco in place for it, but they didn't really have a good way for people to um, get signed up for programs or get registered for membership. Um, and then with all of the transferring of the calls and everything like that, um, they actually implemented a call center. Um, so I'll be introducing him in a second, but um, they had the call center as they were implementing capacity for to say, we want to be able to have people go to a centralized place to call in and we can get their information answered instantly. And to do that, we're gonna use capacity. So as Michael was talking about how internally 
Dayton team uses capacity. So they their call center agents actually go to capacity internally to find the information instantly um, to make sure they have those high quality phone calls when people do choose to call in. Um, externally, as Michael already showed as well, if they have a chat bot on their website. So if you guys would go to the DaytonYMCA.org's website, you can see it right there live. Um, so if users like myself, if you don't want to call in, you don't have to, and you'd be able to get that information instantly. So with all that, I'll go over some analytics in a second. But before I go into that, um, Sarah, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, I want to introduce um, some of the greater Dayton YMCA team members that I have worked with for almost two years. Um, so the first is Pamela Flatter. So she's the IT training and support specialist at um, at the Dayton Y. And then we also have Casey Dorensky, who is the director of call center operations. I've worked side by side with these, these two, um, along with a third who couldn't make it today. Um, but I've worked with them for almost two years, as I said, um, to make this really a success with capacity, Dayton Y, and the integration into DAXCO. So with that, um, I'm going to, Sarah, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, I just want to go through a couple analytics before I ask the Dayton Y team some questions. I know Rudy, Michael, myself, we can throw this information at you guys all you want or all we want, but we understand hearing it from a client directly is going to be the best way um, to, to hear all of this and, and how they have created some low effort interactions for their community. So the first, the first slide up here, um, so as Michael said earlier, the 5,900 inquiries a month, 90% um, are deflected almost instantly, so in about two seconds. And if you look on the right-hand side, I know, it's, I know it's pretty small up there, but you can actually see how do I become a member and then register for a program are the top things that people are asking inside of their chatbot. And then those are all DAXCO skills, as we like to call them. So that is truly instead of scrolling on their website, trying to find where do I become a member, you simply either click it, um, click an option, or you type it in of how do I become a member, and we navigate, we pull directly real time from uh, DAXCO to, pull you, to give you a link and you go directly to it in your browser to sign up to become a member or to register for a program. So you don't need to go through the whole website to try to find something, you go on the homepage to be able to find it right then and there. Um, and then Sarah, if you wouldn't mind going to the next screen as well, so this is just to show an overview of their their analytics. So this was pulled, um, I, I think it was pulled one or two days ago, but the last 30 days, 99% of the questions asked inside of that chatbot were deflected. So 99% of the questions asked on this chatbot did not have to go to Casey and his team, which I, I don't know about you guys, but I think that's, that's pretty good. So uh, to make sure that people are getting the answers they want instantly, which is a very low effort, um, conversation that someone is having. And then, so if you go to the next slide, Sarah, so this is to show 24-7 uh, people are actively um, asking questions. I don't know why someone would be asking a question or wondering how to sign up for membership at 1 a.m., but we sure want to be able to let them become a member at 1 a.m. if they want. And I know Casey and his team probably do not want to be answering the phone uh, during that time. So to make it as low effort as possible, people can ask their questions 24-7 and not have to wait for a response um, come 8 a.m. when Casey's team would be back online. Um, so with, with all of those analytics, I did have a couple questions for you, Casey and Pam, um, to just kind of go over your experience of with capacity and how, how that works um, with the DAXCO integration. So Casey, I'm going to pose this one to you. Um, I have a couple questions. So how has capacity impacted your call center call center operations since you've started? For us, the biggest help has been um, just keeping a effective, efficient, consistent database there and providing a layer of confidence to all the call center agents, knowing that they can get the needed information quickly, easily, and be able to relay that to the person on the phone and let that person go about their day pretty quickly. I, I love to hear that. I love to hear that. We want people to be able to get on with their day. Um, so I think I think that's that's great. Um, and then so how has capacity enabled your helped enable your call center agents? I know it's a little similar, but is there any any difference there? Uh, sure. It's it's that layer of confidence, you know, with that confidence level, 
having that information there and ready for any situation that may come through any question, you know, it really just strengthens the agent's ability to focus on customer service and provide what that person is needing at that moment. Uh, but especially with new hires, when they come in, you know, it's, it's built in confidence without having to download and understand everything all at once. You don't have to keep that in your head the whole right. time. Casey. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. Um, so with, with that as well, after implementing capacity, have you seen an increase or decrease in the average handle time um, or the amount of call transfers from your branches since I know that was originally um, an issue for the Dayton Y team? So for us in, in our member population, it wasn't that we needed to decrease our overall handle time. It was that we needed to actually increase it a little bit. And so having that confidence in capacity and being able to find the information that's needed, it's allowed us to focus on the overall member experience and take advantage of each interaction as members and the public are calling in. Wonderful. Because um, I, I know you don't want someone to call in and then be transferred uh, three different times and it only took two minutes. <laughs> but they weren't actually able to receive their answer and then they'd have to go somewhere else to be able to find that information. Exactly. So that's perfect. And then the last question I had for you, Casey, is where else do you see capacity being used in your organization? Yeah, so one of our future goals, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later, is uh, adding live chat. That way we can capture people that are on the website and assist them um, to make it easier for them to get the information they need versus them having to call. So being able to capture those individuals in real time and facilitate those needs without ever making a phone call. Perfect. So if it'd be someone's asking about a question that maybe is a little more complicated um, than something your chatbot would know the answer to that someone wouldn't have to give a phone call if they don't want, and they'd be able to talk to your agents uh, directly in that chatbot. Exactly. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you for that, Casey. No and problem. Then, then uh, Pam, I have a couple questions for you as well. Um, so how do you think member experience has changed since you have implemented capacity? Yeah, we've seen numerous changes, but three key changes that I want to focus on since implementing capacity. Um, we've seen improved responsiveness, streamlined support, and continuous improvement. So with capacity, we've been able to respond to those member inquiries and request much faster, in addition to adding the 24-7 support that we've mentioned um, through the chatbot or the concierge. Capacity has streamlined our support process, making it easier for members and for staff to find the information they need, um, whether it's troubleshooting, maybe a comment issue or accessing um, relevant resources, we can now navigate our services much more effectively effectively. Um, and capacities, analytics, and insights provide valuable feedback on member interactions, allowing us to identify areas for improvement and refine our, our services accordingly. Um, with this information, you know, we can continuously enhance the member experience. So those would be the three key areas. Amazing. That's wonderful to hear. And I know uh, I'm saying that for everyone on this call, but uh, I meet with the Dayton team weekly. So these are these are things that we talk about and we look at and you're able to see, okay, DAXCO skills are being used great. How can we make um, other items like that available to our members since those are being used so heavily? And then Pam, I got two more questions for you. Um, how has your technology buying process changed since implementing capacity? Sure. And to be honest, we never had a very formalized process. Um, as, as a nonprofit, I think that's probably kind of familiar for some folks, but we are much more aware of the versatility of capacity and we are looking for ways to leverage that within our association. Perfect. Love to hear it, especially as nonprofit folks on the call. Um, I know you guys probably don't have the biggest budget as others. So we want to be able to, Daxco and Capacity, to be able to uh, make the most of it for, for you to essentially be the most for your communities and make it as low effort um, for your communities to keep everyone loyal as well. All right. And then, Pam, I had one more question for you. Um, let's see. Where else would you potentially see Capacity being used in your organization as well? Sure. Um, capacity has demonstrated its usefulness in a 
in various areas um, within our organization. This year, of course, we are looking forward to growing our knowledge base, um, just expanding that. Our HR team, of course, is looking into the best ways to serve our employees through um, or within our payroll system. And then we're looking forward to launching live chat as well just to increase our member services support options. Um, I know there's a couple exciting things coming out soon with capacity. So we are um, anticipating, you know, identifying additional areas of oppor or opportunities um, to implement it and really drive value and um, just innovation throughout our organization. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks so much for that, Pam. And I, <laughs> I say that, Pam, I know you're anticipating some of those releases and I think that's going to be good for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, as especially we're going to be able to even enhance our DAXCO skills further um, or other integrations as well. So with that, those are the questions I had. So uh, Rudy, um, I will go ahead and pass it back on over to you. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. Um, you know, I, I did want to let the let the audience know uh, that Pamela's real name is Pamela Flatter. That is not a stage name, but uh, uh, you know I, I can concur that uh, Capacity is doing great work for for Greater Dayton. I, I was able to actually go in and get Capacity to do my March Madness bracket just now during the call. Uh, so go Dayton! I got y'all picked uh, to win uh, in about an hour and a half. So thank y'all for your business and being a great Daxco customer. So leave you with a couple of stats uh, that were in the book. By the way, before I forget, if you are on this call and you would like a copy of the book, I am happy to send it to you personally. Uh, if you would just put your information in the chat um, and uh, that way we can follow up with you and we'll make sure uh, we have one of the books for you. And um, I can even give you a couple of the, the pages and chapters I like to refer to. But some additional stats that, that really can help you build a business case with your associations for why we need to go think differently about community efforts to score. So um, for low effort experiences, um, there was a 94% higher likelihood of repurchase of a product or service. For high effort experiences, it was only a 4% uh, higher likelihood. Uh, for low effort experiences, there was an 88% higher likelihood for increasing their spend, or it might be in, in your case, uh, adding on more services with your association, 4% uh, for a high effort. Uh, interestingly enough, for low effort experience, there was only a 1% higher likelihood of uh, providing negative word of mouth or bad reviews on social media, 81% high uh, for high effort experiences. And then again, we talked about low uh, the low effort versus high effort in, in terms of disloyalty. Low effort experiences yielded only 9% higher disloyalty. High effort experiences uh, yielded a 96 percent higher disloyalty. And you know, the interesting piece is this was this this study was all done leading up to COVID. So I would actually gander that after COVID, expectations even increased more. I think we would all agree. I think we all had to get much more tech savvy and our expectations of technology have increased. So I think it's a very relevant statistic as we look at our community and how we can have more impact. Um, you know, for our members and the overall uh, people that need our help. So a um, couple things. Um, I, I think you need, uh, if you'd like, get your camera out or take some screenshots. I have a couple of QR codes for you. By the way, uh, I, I, I asked this question yesterday. QR stands for quick response. Uh, I just learned that. Um, pretty interesting technology. It actually was going to go away in the late 2000s. And then people finally figured out once the advent of texting came about, it created much lower effort experiences for businesses to quickly share information where they previously wanted to get your cell phone number or your email and put you in a CRM and follow up. What they found out was that quick response codes, people would easily just put their camera on it and engage that way. So good example of uh, lowering customer effort. Uh, but if you take the quiz, it can go through your community effort score and kind of rank you below average above. Um, I was excited. My my uh, my why was in the green, and so I, I would concur they do a good job. Um, but if there's areas that we're struggling, um, you know, if there's things that Daxco could be doing better for you to help with that, we want to uh, be a good partner there. If you're not a Daxco customer, obviously we can refer you some ways to to look at that and maybe uh, look at things that Capacity can do. Um, uh, but please take a moment to uh, take a take a screenshot of that uh, QR code, or you can cut and paste uh, the website uh, link right there. And then um, getting to the end, we did have um, a number of materials, uh, more, 
more quick response codes for you uh, to the Daxco blog and the Capacity blog. These are all just content for you to share amongst your organizations that are just a good, good piece of information that support what we just discussed. So, um, you know, if you want to just go do all this self-paced learning um, and don't, you know, want to talk to us because it's easier to, to do your own thing, those blogs should have all the content that you need about, you know, again, digital, better communication, better, fee better feedback, and better ways to reduce effort in uh, operations. So uh, I believe we'll be making a, a copy of this presentation available as well. Um, and so, uh, you know, with that, um, you know, again, we feel like, you know, we want to do a better job helping you with, you know, those things. If you'd like us to help you with those, Capacity has an amazing support of automation platform. Um, and, you know, we can talk more about marketing automation uh, as well, if that's something that uh, you're looking for assistance with in lowering your overall community effort score. So uh, with that, I'd like to thank everybody for joining. Thank you very much, Greater Dayton. Uh, thank you very much, Capacity. And on behalf of Daxco, very much appreciate everybody uh, joining us. And I think uh, now we're uh, opening up for Q&A. No Q and A. I see some book requests. No book requests. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for the Dayton Y team? Since I know that they're they're on today, if you guys have any questions directly for them, I know they're more than happy to to ask them or answer them. Looks like lots of requests for books, at least. <laughs> I, I guess I'll ask a question to, to Greater Dayton. You know, we talked about future enhancements. Um, you know, if you had to make, wave your magic wand, what are some other areas that we should be? And I gave some other pieces to the presentation around feedback and communication and digital. What are some other areas that we haven't talked about that, that you think would be great things for us to be in discussion about? Are you asking about Daxco specifically? Uh, no, it doesn't have to be. It could just be what is what is you know what are some high effort areas that because again we're technologists we don't always think outside the box as much as we should. What are some other areas that you think are affecting wise and affecting your community that are causing a lot of high effort that that uh, could be reduced? Yeah, I can tell you that one that we are looking to resolve this year is registration for childcare day camp and early learning. That is a very time consuming process and it's a very demanding process to have all of the paperwork. And so Casey and I are working to, to resolve that this year. Great. And I would say that is probably the highest effort <laughs> member experience that you can have within our, our Y is trying to sign up for childcare. Now, is that specific to like, when you say childcare, is that after school care? Is that summer camp? Is that all of the above? All of the above. Okay. Because <laughs> it's not just the sign up, it's the waivers and the permissions and the who can pick them all up. The state and, required information, yes. I don't know. Yeah, I've got a nine year old. I understand. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great topic. I'd be willing to bet there's a number of people on this on this webinar that would, would uh, concur. Um, and I would say candidly, Dexco should probably be finding ways to do better for you there, um, you know, and partnering with uh, folks like Capacity. So I'd love to talk more about that. Okay. Any others, Casey? No, I think what Pam was talking about there, that that's the big one. Um, you know, the, the time commitment involved in that, and then just trying to see what we can do to ease that burden on, you know, not just 
you know, public, but internally for the association as well is really big right now. Yep. Uh, looks like we got a couple questions in chat. Uh, one was uh, about taking donations in the chat bot. Uh, it's definitely functionality that is available. Um, and it's part of what's really great about capacity is it is heavily modular and customizable. So um, it's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, whatever you're using currently for donations, we can point to that or facilitate that in the chat with uh, without much trouble. Um, and it looks like there was another question. How much time did it take to organize the knowledge base? Maybe Sammy or Pam, you want to speak to that? So I'm, I'll, I'll eventually give it on over to you, Pam and Casey, but I will say with time, um, they are continuously adding to their knowledge base. So they do have their external site. They have an internal site. They actually launched a presidium. Um, it's like a public facing article site for Presidium content. So I'll say that. So they are constantly adding new knowledge in. I would say in the beginning, it took a few months because they didn't have all the information in one place. So if you do currently have your information in one place, um, it could be a lot easier or maybe it's on your website. Um, and since we've launched with the date and why when we, I think a year and a half ago or something like that, um, there have been new AI technologies that have come out where we could surface some information on your website. I know we have that for the date and why, so it might take less time um, than it did when we originally set up for the date and why. But as I was saying, they continuously add to it. So I would say it's a continuous process, but just to get up right in the beginning, if you do have some information documented, even if it's on your website, um, you could get live pretty quickly. But Pam and Casey, I want to defer to you and see if uh, you had any other insight too. No, absolutely. It's continuous. Yes, we did spend more time up front adding the content, but it is something that Casey and his team looks at on a daily basis. You know, what needs to be added? What are our call center agents, you know, being asked that's not there? What is coming in through the chat bot that is a no match? How can we add that in? So it is, it's continual. I just want to say those are great questions too. I I love I love to hear those type of questions. Yeah, and it's another one came in or clarification I guess mainly asked about time up front. Um, I think that that Pam, both Pam and Sammy spoke really well to that. Typically, we say. Um, 90 day implementation kind of on the front end of things, and I'll also say never in the history of clients has a client ever come to us and said I have the greatest knowledge base ever. Uh, it's already done. You know, the perfect time to start is now uh, and, and grow from there. Awesome. Well, I think that's that's the uh, all of the questions so far, uh, Rudy, if I think we'll wrap it up. Yeah, folks, unless there's anything else, we'll uh, we'll get the books out to you. And, and again, we would love to speak with you more kind of like what we've learned from the book and, and our experiences. And obviously, Capacity has been a great partner in helping us, helping us with that as well. But uh, I let you all uh, get back to your day and uh, look forward to staying in touch with everybody. And again, thank you all for uh, thank you all. And I'd also like to thank uh, the, the host behind the scenes. You have not met Sarah and Kara uh, behind the scenes who have been running the show for us. Um, so you might see there. Their names here and there. They are the glue that keeps all these kinds of things together. So thank them too. Um, but appreciate y'all. We'll see you again soon.